Every morning, Karen Thompson's Year 6 class at Cockington Primary in Torquay start the day in a different way to the rest of the school. They look at the news. The class takes time to look at specific stories, discussing issues that they see as important and thinking about the world around them. This program looks at how Karen Thompson teaches citizenship at Cockington by using news to inspire her class. Most mornings we spend about 15 minutes at the very beginning of the day looking at the news website and that's really quite a nice time because um, it's a time when we work together as a class, children listen to each other, they're interested and the stories we, we, we give a good balance of stories about pop music and football and also more more, more detailed, more, more gutsy stories that um, inspire more controversial responses. It focuses the children at the beginning of the day. It wakes them up a bit. And I think it also puts their learning again into context and makes what they're doing for the rest of the day, particularly if we can draw some links, more, more meaningful and gives more purpose. Old people um, think that um, people with hoodies, yeah, look like thugs. And I think they should get banned. I, I don't think they should be banned because it's not what you wear that defines who you are, but it's your personality. Why? Why then do you think some people are against children wearing hoodies for school uniform? Are all people who wear hoodies bad? Are they all bad people? They're not necessarily all bad because I because you can get all different colours. Some of them they don't want to be bad, they just want to have like fashion, but some of them as, as we said, they want to hide their identity so they can't like, be seen if they want to do anything. I've, I've always been really interested in bringing the news and current affairs into the classroom, both um, to reflect the work that is being done within the curriculum and also to provide a trigger to, to other curriculum areas. With the advent of the interactive whiteboard, um, it made me realise quite quickly with its internet links that we could bring the news, which is really quite abstract for children. Uh, it seems quite removed from their lives, right into the heart of the classroom. Children enjoy it, and even for quite disaffected pupils, it's dealing with what's happening in their, in their lives, it's real life, and it, it motivates and inspires children. Because <laughs> my dad always gets the paper, I've started reading it with him, and started watching the news with my mum and my dad. When I used to um, read the newspaper, I only used to look at the um, things which they were selling. But now I actually read from the start and see if there's any um, eye-catching stories. I didn't even know about the news website before um, Miss Thompson showed us, but now my free time, I go on it. Within their learning and acquisition of skills, I think they've, they've sharpened and, and refined their abilities to debate, to take part, to listen and respond to what other people are saying. They've, they've developed tolerance and understanding of other people's points of views and how to respect um, and, and understand the fact that people have different opinions and different perspectives. This morning, Karen and her class look at a story about child labour in India on the news website. I want to look at this story, actually. What does it say? Diwali. <coughs> Diwali sparks child work protest. Children in India have been prepared protesting about being forced to work in factories making fireworks. Reporters say some children have been killed in fires, even though it is illegal for them to work in factories. So should children be working in factories? Should young children be working like that in, in jobs in society? Lewis? No, because they're too young to work. They're too young to even work in a factory, so and it could cause them lifelong damage. They're wasting their really like life. They should be trying to learn. I don't really think about um, where the fireworks are made because it's you just think that it's just from a shop or like somebody from England's made them, but actually some children. <laughs> Debating and discussing the news has helped the Year 6 children to become responsible citizens through learning to see different perspectives and cooperating with one another. The children use these skills throughout the school in their roles as play buddies, playground monitors, peer mediators, 
peer mentors and reading carousel monitors. Citizenship means to me caring and helping each other in the community. Citizenship means to me helping our environment. Citizenship means to me listening to others and finding out more about other people. Where the new stories link with other areas of the curriculum, it can really enrich and make more meaningful the learning that's going on in those other curriculum areas and give a purpose for learning and thus embracing the whole of the primary strategy. The meeting is about the future of the factory. For example, in their history lesson, the children are learning about citizenship through the rights of the child by looking at child labour in Victorian times. This links back to a child labour news story the children discussed this morning. Very different perspectives going into this problem. The future of the factory and whether children should work in the factory. Everybody has to play a role. The children act out group role plays assuming roles as a working child, middle class Victorian reformer and factory owner. I think I d at least deserve a little more respect from you and more, I, I think I deserve more pay. I don't care, they all smell. Ten more shillings for a whole week of hard child labour. It's not enough. If we think about the wonderful work you've just been doing, looking at that situation of workers in Victorian times, are there any parallels with any of the stories we looked at this morning that are happening now that were reported on the, on the site we were looking at? The Diwali Sparks Child protest. That right, so what was that story about, Lewis? Do you remember it was that? about child, you know, children making fireworks. I think learning about citizenship and PSHE as well should be fun. It should be a lesson that during the week the children look forward to and enjoy. If they don't enjoy it, then I, I think there's something wrong somewhere. Um, it should involve a lot of debate, discussion, children working in different groups, children uh, discussing controversial issues and, and beginning to formulate their responses. It, it shouldn't be a lot of written work, a lot of silent individual work, but there should be an emphasis upon collective approaches. I think that the news is essentially controversial and that most, most of the stories and most issues that crop up in the news do have different sides, different perspectives up upon them. And the children as peer mediators are, are aware of looking at stories from different perspectives and realising that we should respect and value different people's views. In their citizenship lesson this afternoon, the children are looking at common rights for minority groups. Some people who think that the UK is too soft on asylum seekers and they let too many people stay in the country and they're taking up money and jobs which should go to people in the UK. Who in the story is, is, um, ag agrees with that philosophy? Gina's mum wants the school to spend all the money on them, the local people, instead of the refugees and asylum seekers. What do you think, Dominic? I think they should... Um, allow them, the asylum seekers, to come into the country. I think it's really good for children within a, a, a safe environment within the classroom to be able to give their responses and their thoughts and their developing ideas about controversial issues and understand that there are others in the class who will disagree. That doesn't mean they won't be friends anymore. As the next part of our lesson looking at minority groups, we're going to play the Great Divide. So you're standing in the middle now. I'm going to read out some statements. If you agree with a statement, you can move to this side. This is agree. If you disagree, you can move to this side. Things that happen in countries far away don't really affect me. Agree, disagree. Who wants to say something? If something happens in a different country, it, it, I think it affects us because it's the world we live in as well as everyone else's. I also think it's really important that um, we don't dwell too much on the sadness and, and the badness of the world, but that we say to children, that even though there are worrying things happening in their world, that the majority of people out there are good and the majority of people want to change it and make it, and make it a better place and uh, that they can feel positive ab about their futures and about the future of the planet. Uh, this is a story, a, a true story, about a little girl called Aban in Ghana. So she works in Africa. What does it say? She works up to... 
Everybody, her knees in water. Somebody read her story for us, please. Um, Amy, can you read it? Compared to British kids, I have a difficult life. Sometimes I don't get I don't get food before I go to school, and then I have I have to go straight to work. And I didn't want you going away thinking it's a terrible, terrible place out there because there are people trying to help these children and trying to make the world a better place. Just like the Victorian social reformers worked hard to make the world a better place for Victorian working children. I also try to involve parents as much as possible. So part of the children's homework is to go home and talk about the news at home and talk about the controversial and sensitive issues that we've discussed in the classroom. Um, I do think that Rachel being exposed to some of the news is a good thing. Um, it helps her understand what's going on in the world. They're, they're not so sort of stuck in a little box anymore. They, they, they know what's happening and it's, it's good for them. They need to know. I think it's absolutely crucial that any teachers of PSH in citizenship ensure that there are clearly defined ground rules in place before embarking upon anything that might be controversial or sensitive. And that because they associate... The children decide themselves what sort of rules they want to promise to agree to. Then, should we then ban them? Before we look at, this, at the website this morning, we want to reaffirm our ground rules so we all feel safe and secure in here. What ground rules would you like to agree to promise to today? Don't interrupt when somebody else is speaking. If someone disagrees with something, like if their best friend says, um, they, they don't have to stop being friends. Any other rules, anybody? Don't laugh at other people's thoughts. An excellent one. No laughing, no putting anybody down for their, their thoughts and their beliefs. Respect what people say inside the circle. When someone says something, you don't tell anyone else. Absolutely. We Confidentiality. We keep things that come up in the class here with us. As far as citizenship is concerned, um, reading the news and then debating and discussing gives them the opportunities to, um, to participate, to make choices, make decisions and consider moral and social dilemmas. In 1955, she refused to give up her bus seat to a white man in Alabama. It was the law at that time that black people should stand up and allow white people to sit down. What do you think about that? I think it's terrible because we should all be treat treated equally. Thank you. And in my experience, that taking responsibility and, and maturity, really, of response, as well as the critical thinking, is then reflected back in their work in the rest of the curriculum. As a family, yes, we're definitely watching the news more because of the questions that Rachel's asking. It, it's like having a conversation with an adult, really. Um, She's, she's contributing quite a lot to you know, the usual conversations that I would normally have with my husband. Using the news has, has really changed the children. They're more informed. They're, they are much more prepared to stand up for inequalities and, and speak out against things which they don't think are right. They're noisier, they've got more to say, but, but they're tolerant as well, and, and they're wise. They're developing wisdom and... and and they're really more interesting people.